Hi, welcome to this session. Today I will talk about a fundamental cryptographic problem. Um, when we are using the same key for encryption and MAC operations, uh, we may get into interesting um, vulnerabilities. The objective of this video session is to show uh, a concrete demo highlighting the the importance of using different keys for different operations. Okay, let's get straight into the problem. Um, we will explain why using the same key for encryption, same key for encryption and MAC is not good. That's what we're going to do today. All right. Um, so the approach I'm going to take is to show you first the, the basics of MAC, the basics of how a MAC is constructed. Um, without going into the fundamental details of MAC algorithm per se, um, I'll construct a simple one, and I will do the encryption also to show to, show to you this uh, same key reuse problem, uh, how it can be exploited. Okay, so I plan to do it in two phases. In first phase, I will show you um, uh, with a simple assumption that the message itself is uh, not secret. So anybody can see the message, but we don't want them to tamper the message, okay? For example, the message could be your source code. Um, if it's open source code, there is no reason to encrypt, but you want to um, sort of make sure that nobody can edit the open source project, otherwise you, we get into security problems. So we want to uh, have Mac for um, source code. In other words, we need integrity uh, is needed, okay? In the second phase, I will talk about uh, encrypting the message and uh, and also integrity okay of the ciphertext of the resulting ciphertext so nobody can edit the ciphertext so two phases okay let's start with the first phase message itself is not secret but integrity is needed how do we do that so i put together this um, same key use demo uh, as I said, message itself is not secret, so it's it's perfectly fine to have something like this. I I, I decided to choose only one block of um, plain text message for the demo purpose. Therefore, you may see me using AES in uh, ECB mode, which is usually considered bad. Um, ECB is the electronic code book mode, but it's not a problem to use as long as the messages are unique and they are only one block that they, they don't repeat it themselves. Okay. Um, this will avoid me dealing with IV initialization vectors and things like that. ECB is a straightforward uh, to use if you have only one block of plain text to encrypt. And, and if you know for sure the, the messages are unique, then there's no problem with it. Okay. <clears throat> All right. I will take AES key size of 256 and the rest is standard. Um, template code that we have been seeing for quite some time. Um, we create a key. Okay, now how am I going to calculate the MAC? Um, there is a method I have written here called calculate MAC um, for the demo purpose, um, which will use AES-based MAC algorithm. And then um, we will print the MAC. We will verify the MAC also. We will verify by sending the message and the MAC and the key, the MAC key, to make sure the, the MAC is valid. So let's start with calculate MAC first. What will calculate MAC do? Calculate MAC is taking two inputs, right? First is the message and the key that we wanted to MAC uh, the message. It will print out uh, the MAC, as you can see here, the MAC is printed out, and we can verify the MAC, okay? We take the same message and we pass the MAC that we got from the calculate MAC, and we can check whether the Mac is not tampered nor the message is tampered. Okay, let's first run it so to get a feel for this program. Java C encrypt Mac. So what you see here is that this is the message that we uh, um, wanted to create a Mac for, and this is the Max. Um, this is the Mac in hex, and um, it says true, meaning the Mac is valid when we did verification. Okay, um, we can make some modifications now let's say we have a bad message right let's take another message assume this public message was tampered right to something like this message bad um, we have all a's 
right? Except the last um, bit flipped to make it to, to B. Um, let's assume the attacker managed to change the message, right? From good message to bad message. Now, what will happen is that uh, we are calculating the MAC of the good message from the sender side, but the attacker modified it. So that means we verify using the bad message now. Okay. So now the MAC should fail, right? Because this is the message that has been tampered with. But this is the MAC that was originally sent by the sender based on the good message, right? And this is the MAC key. So now let's see whether the MAC verification fails or not. It should. Okay, as we expected, the MAC verification failed. All right, that's good. Um, by the way, the MAC changes because the key, the MAC key was also randomly generated in this demo, so therefore you, you see a different MAC. But uh, the, that's the purpose of the MAC algorithm is if somebody tampers with the message or tamper with the MAC, then the verification algorithm will, will detect the problem. Okay, let me now get rid of the bad message. We got the idea how it works. Uh, that's not important for us. Okay, what I wanted to show to you now is my own simple construction that is correct construction for Mac, um, just for demonstration purpose, right? My goal is to demonstrate that using the same um, key for encryption in Mac is not good. So far, we didn't encrypt the message. We, we as you can see, uh, we took the message and we are actually sending it in clear text to the receiver. That's perfectly fine in our case. <coughs> Excuse me. So how is Calculate Mac actually working? Calculate Mac is, is doing some simple tricks here um, for the demo purpose, which is, which is perfectly fine, actually. Let me explain Calculate Mac algorithm briefly. We take two inputs, right? The data, the data is the data message you wanted to Mac, and um, uh, the secret key that is that will be used for calculating the MAC, the message authentication code. So, so in in my case, the MAC algorithm is actually like this. Um, the MAC algorithm is basically uh, using how am I calculating the MAC? MAC is computed by using AES uh, in decryption mode. That means you are going to decrypt AES. Okay, using AES of your plain text, which is quite unusual, right? Um, you usually don't um, apply decryption on a plain text, you would use encryption. But MAC function uh, is, 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 is okay in this case because um, if an attacker managed to edit the MAC uh, and they still pass the verify MAC function, then he actually broke AES, which is much serious problem. So. This is a perfectly fine Mac because this is how AES works is that it is difficult for an attacker to um, it, uh, to predict the input um, given the output. It is also um, difficult for an attacker to predict the output given the input. So it goes both ways. Um, so that's the reason I created the Mac um, by using an AES decryption function with the Mac key. Okay, so our Mac is uh, calculated like this. Verify Mac, as I mentioned earlier, will take the data and will take the Mac and the, and the secret key and calculate whether um, the expected Mac and the actual Mac are the same. Uh, where is the um, uh, actual Mac? The actual Mac is computed using calculate Mac, right? On the data and the key, it will give us the byte array, we compare it against the Mac. I must point out that whenever you write something like this equal, you wanted to make it, um, it's difficult for attacker to predict the time in which the Mac failed. So this algorithm, which is uh, uh, easily found on the internet, is constant time algorithm. Um, it checks whether two arrays are equal um, by going through all the elements of the array right here. And it will not break out uh, during the very first mismatch. So it's going to continue uh, to make sure this equal works in constant time. All right. Um, so we, have, we got to know how the MAC algorithm is implemented in this case. Um, usually in practice, you wouldn't write uh, your own MAC, uh, but, but in this case, we have only one block, so AES decryption function is perfectly fine to use. Um, no, no problems on that topic. Okay, so now come back, coming back to the problem itself, we, we said we should not be using the same key for encryption 
and for Mac, right? So let me show you why. For that, I need to encrypt the message. Okay, how am I going to do that? Let me encrypt the message. First, I'm going to do encrypt message. I will get a cipher text, right? So I will get cipher text by doing encrypt of my message using the key. So I got the encrypt function returning me the cipher text. Now I will do map calculation on the cipher text. Okay. So maybe I should copy this here. It's better. Okay. And paste it here. So I calculated the cipher text. And for the cipher text, I would like to compute the MAC. Okay. Okay. Calculate the MAC of the cipher text. Okay. Now the MAC is computed not on the plain text, but on the cipher text. I'm following this paradigm called encrypt then authenticate. I will summarize that later, but at this point, um, I first calculate the MAC on the cipher text. Okay, now I'm also going, to, I'm not going to print the message, of course, now because message itself is, is secret. Um, now I'll calculate the MAC of the cipher text. Okay, I'm going to calculate the MAC because I need to send two things to the receiver, right? I need to send the cipher text and the MAC of the cipher text. So we got the cipher text here. Okay, we can print it here for our visualization purpose. We can print it here. System out uh, ciphertext is equal to, uh, I wanted to print it in hex, so I will use the Java's data type converter function, ciphertext. Okay, so we got ciphertext, we got Mac. Now, remember here, I am not printing anywhere uh the plain text itself right because the plain text now becomes a secret okay now let's see what happens when you compile and run aha you see here the mac is printing 41 41 41 what is this if you want to be sure i will show you what 41 means in hex i'm sorry print i want to print the ascii value for you see here 41 41 corresponds to capital a that means the MAC actually is, is leaking our plain text. All of the 41s correspond to capital A, which is nothing but our message. So accidentally, we leaked the complete plain text as part of the MAC. Um, remember here, we are sending only the ciphertext, which the receiver will decrypt and, and extract the, the data. But in this case, it's not possible because I mean, it's still possible, but the Mac is le leaking the plain text itself, so there is no security here. Of course, verify Mac now should not be verifying against the uh, message. It should be verifying against the ciphertext, so we can check that part first. So let me compile this. Okay, so as you can see, Mac verification succeeded, but still the same problem is there. The Mac itself is leaking data about our plain text. I will quickly um change these A's into B's just to make sure that you have um gotten my point regarding um regarding the problem of reusing the same um same um same key for encryption and for mac okay so i need 16 um bytes of uh, plain text so i'll just change this by bbb okay bbb bbb Okay, I think I got 16. Um, no, did I? Okay, here it is, 16, which we will use as encryption data. Now we should be seeing Mac still leaking the same thing, but we will have Mac values in 42, 42, 42. Perfect. 42, 42, 42 means D in a, in a hex value of ASCII. Okay, so uh, the lesson is clear that if we use now let me get back to the problem right so i, I did this part this is okay this is uh, there is only one key of course there is um let me remove the phase one because phase one is not a main problem right what, because we are talking about both encryption and the mac okay if you do um encrypting message and the encrypt and then you can compute the integrity of the resulting cipher text uh, make sure make sure the keys are different okay so why was the attack possible in our case um, the attack was possible because this is how the the algorithm was was organized right the mac was computed we have two things we first compute the ciphertext 
ciphertext was computed by, com by, co by doing an encryption of a plain text. Um, usually in cryptography, we write the key first, so I'm talking in an algorithmic term, key first, and then we have a plain text. So we have key and plain text encryption uh, to give us the ciphertext. And then we computed the MAC, right? What did we do for MAC? We applied the MAC algorithm. What was the MAC algorithm? In our case, it was just AES, but in a decryption mode. So let me call it AES um, decrypt, right? Which is a perfect fine, fine AES decrypt. is a perfectly fine MAC, by the way. There's no question about that. Um, but what did we do? We used the same key. So we, used, we are using the same key here and the same key here. That's the problem. Okay, so the K happened to be same in our case. Okay, now what did we send? We sent this pair to the receiver, right? The receiver has ciphertext and MAC. Okay, why is this terrible? This is terrible because what is the purpose of AES decrypt? AES decrypt will decrypt the data, right? So what is the data we have? We have the ciphertext as the data. So in other words, in other words, this is nothing but the plain text, right? Oh, sorry. So you have the plain text here. You have, your plain text is reversed by AES decrypt function. That's exactly what AES decrypt does. Again, as I said earlier, defining the MAC to be equal to AES decrypt is perfectly fine but you need to make sure that the AES encrypt and the AES decrypt are using different keys, right? Otherwise, uh, the, the, from the MAC, we can deduce the plain text. Okay, um, you will not use necessarily in your implementation, uh, AES decrypt as a way to compute MAC of your message, but it, it's, um, for the proof of concept, it's perfectly fine to demonstrate that using the same key for uh, encryption and MAC operations is not good in general because these two algorithms actually interacted, right, in our case. Um, therefore, um, MAC simply exposed the hidden private plain text, right? The MAC basically ex exposed our uh, plain text. So the message I wanted to um, come back is that we don't want to use the same key for different operations. Okay, this is the main main message, of course. Make sure the keys are different. Otherwise, you have the attack sequence like this. Attack sequence. Okay. Mac is Mac is basically exposing the plain text. Okay. Um, again, um, <clears throat> excuse me. I have been using AES in ECB mode in this demo. Let me recall that. That's important to to make sure we get across it correct. If we use encrypt function here. Uh, I am using Java. Java doesn't allow me to encrypt one block of AES um, without any padding. If a block is unique, the padding is useless. Okay, uh, and the uh, IV in the initialization vector is also useless. So I have to use uh, ECB mode, which which doesn't deal with IV, um, and I can still encrypt only one block of message I would like to encrypt for this demo. So in general, you wouldn't be using ECB in your projects for long messages or um, even for short messages if they may repeat. Um, you know, if your message one is same as message two, or if the first block of message one is same as the first block of message two, um, the encryption algorithm will leak that pattern. Um, so uh, by using ECB, um, you are going to expose that kind of patterns. Uh, but in my case, this is perfectly fine because I'm only encrypting one block of message and it's unique, okay? Otherwise I have to initialize IV and all other things which are not needed for this demo. So the goal of the demo was to just show you that if you use encrypt function with the key K and if you calculate the MAC using the same key, um, then um, you are uh, most likely um, exposing yourself into some security risks. Okay, that's all, thank you very much.